You said that your dad was taking shit from your mom. Well, as a kid, that's what, that was my perspective. Then you grow up, my mom tells me stories and like how my dad actually was. He would lie about having jobs and like go and sit in a farmer jack parking lot for like hours and then come home be like, oh, what a hard day at work. All from Mike. Hello. Yo, what up, Lyle? Mike, what's regal me? Well, uh, you know, just kind of hanging out. Wanted to call for a while. Life's been life's crazy, man. Is it really? Be, on, be honest with me, because I take I, I take things like that seriously. If you tell me your life is crazy, I'm gonna believe you. Or is your life crazy? Even and not to like I any get, kind of not to anyone's standard except your own. To your standard of yeah. craziness, is your life crazy? It's chaotic. Yes. Okay. Tell me. Tell me more. <laughs> well. Uh, I mean, I was in a relationship for like five years that ended recently and, you know, just kind of dealing with that, living in a basement of a family member's house now with my cat, just taking it day by day, I guess. That's not that crazy. Yeah, I guess if you, yeah, compared to most of the people you talk to. No, no, no! I'm not comparing it. To, I'm not comparing it to anyone. This is not in a comparison scale. This is in like a just kind of like going by the dictionary definition of craziness. What is the dictionary for the the, the diction? De, de, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. I I'm I'm regretful of everything I've said to you on the phone so far. <laughs> you don't gotta be regretful. I believe. I don't know if it's insanity that it's. Uh, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You but know I kind of feel like... You know what? You're smart. Because, yes, that is... What, was it Einstein? I don't know. It was some fucking smart guy's definition of insanity. And so, therefore, something boring, the most boring thing you can think of, is the most insane thing you can think of by that definition. So I was wrong, and Albert Einstein was right. Just this one time. Yeah, Albert Einstein's only been right once. <laughs> um, okay. You broke up with a lady. Are you dating other ladies? No, I'm not. Taking, you know, kind of time for myself. Been uh, going to therapy. Oh, yeah. So that's nice. What do you talk about with yeah, your Yeah, for the first time in my life. The first, I don't know. We just kind of, you know, I've been, uh, Chat with her now for I think like six weeks, and uh, turns out I kind of hate my dad. So there's that. That's kind of what. What do you hate about your dad? Ah, uh, he's kind of a douchebag, I guess. You know, he doesn't really talk to me or my siblings at all, and he tries to, but it's very, really, uh, it's like kind of awkward, I guess. It's like when. Imagine like a stranger reaching out to you all the time, pretending that they think they know you, but they really don't. I'm sure you get that as a, a lot as a streamer. It would be sure, but that's would it'd be way weirder if they were if they were my dad. My dad doesn't reach out to me like that. Well, I mean, he does. I talk to my dad, but yeah, it. I mean, uh, my my grandma got cancer, so. He asked me to go over to her house and fix up a bunch of stuff. Meanwhile, he was working on putting her in a nursing home so he could turn around and sell the house. Oh, so, oh, so he asked you to fix the stuff in, in your grandma's house so that the house would have a greater market value. Correct. And he's not even anywhere near here. So he expected me to do everything and then was going to turn around and sell the house and put my grandma in a home, which she asked him not to. Wait, were you going to get a cut? Fuck no, probably not. <laughs> Did you do it? No, I didn't. All right. I, uh, his, his, my aunt, his sister called me and was like, yo, if your dad asks you to go over there, don't do it. And then she kind of filled me in and everything. So I tried to contact him and he's been like kind of ghost ever since. What's he do? Does he have a job? Uh, I don't know. He, 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 him and I are very much alike in the way that it's hard for us to keep jobs. I've jumped around from job to job ever since I was like 
15 years old. Mm. This is the long. Is I've, the current job I have now is my longest one. Why is it hard for you to keep a job? Uh, well, that's kind of one that's one thing I talked to my therapist about. I guess I have a problem with being told what to do, <laughs> mm. and uh, you know, you kind of get a short fuse sometimes. But I'm working on it. You want to be your own guy. You don't want to have to answer to the man. Man, I would love to be my own guy one day, but society, You're your own guy you know, today, buddy. What you can. Do whatever you want. I mean, you need money. You just got to figure that out. How much money do you have? <laughs> you want an honest answer? Yeah. Negative 24. Negative 24,000? Negative 24 dollars. Negative 24 dollars. Okay, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. No, no. No. It's not really. I mean, I do get paid some tomorrow. People, some people, so. are, they have negative 24,000 dollars, but you have more than negative money. Yeah, I can't imagine having negative twenty four thousand. I I wouldn't even know what to do. That's well, you're dirt. richer that you're richer than somebody who has negative twenty four thousand dollars. Okay, so you need money. Do you have Do you have any skills that you can? What are your skills? Uh, I play video games. Okay. So and people, people have made a lot of money doing that. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't work out for everybody. Um, let me think. What else, what other skills do you have? Uh, I can change a windshield on a vehicle in less than 30 minutes. That's a good skill. Yeah. That's a good skill. That's a skill people would pay you to do, to, to use. Yeah. And it's the cool thing about it is it's kind of like a job. Like there's cars everywhere. I could move anywhere and get a job. But I don't have the the money to do that. Why don't you? Uh, what, what? How hard is it to start? This is a genuine question. How hard is it to start a windshield replacement company? Um, I I can't imagine it's 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 too hard. I don't know how hard it is to start a business. Okay. I've been doing it since 2017, though. So okay. Well, got, well, because that's the thing is, if you don't want to, if you don't want to answer to anyone, you just got to you got you start your own thing. You think I should start my own company? Well, I, I mean, if you if your whole thing is you don't want to answer to anyone, then yeah, I mean that comes with its own. Not the desire to not want to answer to anyone is a legitimate desire, but it comes with its own set of problems. But as does I mean, answering to people comes with its own set of problems too, and you just got to examine both of those sets of problems and decide which one you would rather have. Okay, that makes sense. I think, so I think I'd rather I think I'd rather, you know, tell people what to do. Okay, and then have so, them, you know, there's obviously resentment with that, but right. There's if I right. treat people right, if I treat people right, mm -hmm. hate hate's kind of a strong word. No, if you treat no, I don't know. Then I don't think they're gonna hate you. You seem like a nice well, guy. Well, I appreciate that. You're a nice guy too. And I was watching a stream earlier, and you kept apologizing for talking about how much you're going on tour. And I don't think you should apologize for that. Thanks. Because man. you're doing what you want to do, and I think that's pretty cool, man. Oh, thanks, man. All right. Enough about me. I want to hear about your... All right, you're going to start a window business. Yeah, let's do it. All right. What do you... Well, uh, here's the thing. You could take out a loan, but then you're going to have negative $24,000. And we were just talking That's exact, so much shit. I was thinking about that. Have negative $24,000. So we got to go. That's a quick way to make. That's a quick way to become negative $24,000 richer. Right. So maybe that's not a good idea. I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea. I don't, I don't know anything about your industry. I, I, I only know about you. And the fact that you don't want to answer to anyone. And I know that if you don't want to answer to anyone, I know, here's what I know. I know that you need money to eat food and live in a place. I know that you can get money by having a business or having a job. And I know that if you have a job, you have to answer to somebody. And if you have a business, you don't. So, so I've used those conclusions 
to arrive to the to the idea that you should start a window company. But I don't know if, but I don't I I none of, I don't know anything about Windows, and I don't know anything about the window company market. But you do, right? Yeah, I mean okay. everyone. I mean there's cars everywhere. You know people break glass all the time, so it's like it's one of those industries that's needed everywhere. I don't know anywhere that doesn't have cars or glass. Period. You know? Somebody in the chat. I don't like to read the chat, but I've been reading the chat lately. Somebody in the I chat. I closed chat the second you picked up the phone. And I appreciate that. And I should have done the same thing, but I'm. I've been reading the chat. The chat says you should become a truck driver. You ever think about that? Yeah, actually, I moved furniture for like five years and drove uh, from Michigan to Chicago pretty much all the time. But the company was paying like shit. They didn't pay overtime, and yeah, but. I, yeah, I can get, I can see that. You got to get your CDL though. I don't have a CDL. I don't know what that is. Certified driver's license. I think commercial. Commercial. You might be right though. It's a, it, yeah. No, let's go no, certified. I'm a hundred percent not right. You're right. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. So. So what's the what, what's the plan? I'm I'm fired up by this. I'm glad you're fired up because it's been hard to feel fired up recently. Are you feeling? But, are you feeling is, fired up nice. at all, or is it just me? I feel. I feel. I feel good. I, I can't believe you picked up the phone. Actually, okay. <laughs> no, I'm happy to talk. But, uh, to you. you sound like you're. I mean, you sound like this, things are crazy. I mean, yeah. I guess you made me feel like things aren't that crazy, though. So that 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 that's good. I'm glad I called because of that. Okay. Because good. I'm because thinking like, like I'm. I'm thinking I'm spiraling out of control, and I don't have a control of anything except for. My cat, and he attacks me all the time, so he's kind of an asshole, so I can't really control him. But, you know, the second that you say your life's not that crazy, it kind of kind of sticks with you. Okay, good. I'm glad that made you feel good, because I thought I was being a dick. No, I don't think you were being a dick at all. You're okay. talking to a complete stranger on the phone. Right. <laughs> I am. I forgot but, about that. I, thought, I felt like I've, I've, begun, I've begun to feel like we know each other. Well, that's nice. I feel like I kind of know you because I listen to the podcast almost every day, and I watch your streams whenever I can. But why do you? That's why just do you parasocial. Not, why do you not like to um, other people telling you what to do? Where does that come from? I've been trying to figure that out with my therapist as well. I guess I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that I don't know. I grew up watching my dad take a bunch of shit from my mom, and eventually just like pack up and leave. So maybe I figured if shit goes wrong, I could just pack up and leave. Are you cool with your mom? Oh, yeah. I love my mom. She's a saint. But you said that your mom, you said that your dad was taking shit from your mom. Right. Well, as a kid, that's what, that was my perspective. Then you grow up and your parents tell you, or my mom tells me stories and like how my dad actually was. And then he turns around and treats his kids like he's a douchebag. So why I, you know, believe her at that point. He, he would lie about having jobs and, like, go and sit in a Farmer Jack parking lot for, like, hours and then come home and be like, oh, what a hard day at work. <laughs> Wait, what is Farmer Jack? Farmer Jack is an old uh, grocery chain. I don't think they're in uh, business anymore. It might be a Michigan thing. I don't know. You're de- Wait, you're from? are you from Michigan? Yes. So funny because I was gonna say you sound a little, a little bit. I got like, that Midwestern accent, dog. You sound a little bit like Joe Para. I don't know who, who Joe Para is. Is not I, he's not from Michigan, but he is a little Michigany. Or he in the show is <laughs> from Michigan. But anyway, you don't even know who that is. Okay, anyway, I'll Google it after I get off the phone with it's you. Okay. So you, you, don't ever, cannot... you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. All right, I probably won't even remember the name. I know you won't. You don't. don't you don't. You don't have to lie to me and tell me that you're going to Google my reference, because I do that to people. If somebody tells me something, I'll say I'll Google it and I won't do it. I would rather you just sit with me in reality. Okay, your father would go to the grocery store parking lot and sit there and do nothing, and then say that he went to work. Yes, he would come home. Uh, like five five thirty, and be like, "Oh, what a hard day at work." And my mom would. That's so fucking stay dumb took... because he's here's the right. What if my mom went in, to the store? Sitting inside of the grocery store, bagging in his car groceries. in the parking lot. 
is not yeah. that much more strenuous than sitting in the parking lot doing nothing. Yeah. He, so he what, why not at that point just get the job? job? Right. I agree with you 100%. But as a child, I didn't, you know, know that all that stuff happened. I was like six, seven years old, so I didn't know what was going on. All I knew is mommy and daddy were fighting. <laughs> I take back what I said now that I'm thinking about it because I spent I spent and still sometimes spend lots of time in the parking lots of Target, listening to music and eating food and stuff. And that's Target parking lots are S tier though. If you're gonna sit in a parking lot, Target's the spot to go. Okay. Um, that's uh, good people watching too. All right, before we go, or I don't know. I feel like there's uh, there's more things I want to know about you. You sound interesting now. We started this out. I I was debating you on you not being well. I didn't say you weren't interesting. I said your life wasn't crazy. Correct. But no one's ever fighting. called me interesting before, so thank you for that. You're you're you're. No, you are, and you know what? I'm not going to say your life is crazy, but your life has conflict and drama and dilemmas, which make it interesting. Right. Right, but I don't want that. What do you want? I want to move. I want to move to Colorado, and I want to live in the mountains, and I want to like, you know, see some things and drink water out of a creek. Well, there we go. That's just, you haven't you haven't brought that up. We've on the, been on the phone together for seventeen minutes. You haven't even brought that up. Well, I mean, you know, it didn't come up organically. You didn't ask. But now you asked, yeah, it would be nice to live in the mountains. I don't want to be like a mountain person, like feral, but I think it would be cool to like live like in like a little small town, like South Park. I'm trying to think here. You, you don't want to be a mountain person, but you want to live in the mountains. Yes. It's like how your dad, want to be able to... Want to, your, your dad doesn't want to work at the grocery store, but he wants to hang out in the grocery store parking lot. <laughs> I guess we're not that much different. You said you and you said that earlier. Yeah, okay. I did. I'm trying to. I want. I don't. I want to. St- I want to leave this phone call with like, because like I said, I'm fired up, but you're not fired up, and I want to leave this phone call with you, like, thinking about so, like with a plan. Do we have a plan? Are we going to start that window company? Are we gonna move to Colorado? Are we gonna are we gonna do something, or are we gonna keep sitting by, and letting life happen to us? What's your name again, Mike? Are we gonna you know sit what? by and let life happen to us, Mike? No, we're not. We're gonna grab life by the balls and twist it. All right. So what are we doing? Are we taking out a? Are we gonna go twenty four thousand dollars into debt? Are we gonna move to? Let's, well, let's it sounds like we're going into debt either way. Because either starting the window we'll company go, or moving to Denver, we're we're going into debt. We'll do. We'll we'll go to Colorado and we'll open the window company in Colorado, where there's falling rocks and people break glass all the time. Boom! You're a fucking genius. The Earth, Earth will provide me customers by dropping rocks on people's vehicles while they're driving. You know what? You're I, a genius. We brought, we brought him up at the beginning, and I think you're. I think both of us combined are smarter than Albert Einstein. That's that's probably true. Actually, it probably is. I agree. You changed me. Thank you. All right. Are you gonna actually do any of those things? I'm. I'm, I'm fired up right now. Okay. Good. I can't that's stop. What I was, not, that's what I was I'm getting. At. I was fired up for you, and you weren't fired up. And I'm glad you're fired up now. No, I'm fired up now. Let's All do right. it. We're gonna we're gonna move to Colorado. We're gonna open a window company. Everybody who lives in Colorado, come get class. I'll be there next year. Okay. I'm not gonna do any of that, but I, I'm gonna sit. You have I tours hope... to go on. You don't have well, to do that. Uh, yeah, it's true. I'm gonna be in Colorado in like a week, but um, I'm gonna. I'm. I hope you do those things because life's too. Sh- you're you're. I I have the similar. I don't like being told what to do either. I don't either, because life. Yeah, you know, I was short. gonna ask that. I don't know if that's like you can ask me. Like anything. you said earlier, it's it's got to be a common thing, right? But how do you how do you control that? You you don't. It's part. It's your wiring as a human being. You got to work around it. 
And it's good. It's a blessing and a curse, right? Because like I said, those two things, not wanting anyone to tell you what to do and being okay with people telling you what to do both have unique, they, neither one is favorable to the other. They both come with their own set of problems. You just decide which problems you're going to have. I mean, you're deal right now. You're dealing with the problems of your own wiring, right? Because yes. And the pro and and your, your your wiring is inspiring you to go twenty four thousand dollars into debt and move to Denver and start a f fucking rock fixing uh, a window company, which is going to be hard. It's, 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 uh, there's infinite problems involved in doing that, but you're going to take on those problems because you're just wired. Because those are the those are the problems of your wiring. You can't change your wiring, but you can decide you're going to take on the problems yeah wow you're really good at this man am i better than your real therapist uh i mean yeah i guess so i mean she hasn't really talked to me like this you you put things in terms that people like me can understand and i oh, appreciate yeah. that and and you know what your real therapist she went 24 th i didn't have to pay a penny to go live on the computer. Your real therapist, she, uh, you know, she spent $24,000. Yeah, she's probably, she's probably negative $24,000 right now. Negative $24,000, right. Paying it off. Paying it off. You know what? I'm, I'm richer than my therapist. <laughs> That's how um, we're going to end that. It's funny because I, it, throughout all of history, um, I've been, I'm very much, I am not, I'm, leaned heavily into the I am not a real therapist and I am not even slightly a substitute for real therapy and I won't accept anybody telling me that I am but for some reason on this phone call you have me fired up we, I appreciate we fired that. each you, other up you fir You're yeah like we fired therapist. each other up Lyle alright thank you I appreciate it what's the name of this business that you're gonna g give us the name now so that in a year if we remember we'll look it up uh we're going to call it uh, Mike's Glass. <laughs> Come on. Well, think again. Just get, try it one more time. Okay. This is tough. Um, you break it, we fix it. I liked Mike's Glass better. Do that one. All right. I'll do Mike's Glass. Okay. Mike, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, thank you guys for your time. Can I can I plug my Twitch channel? Oh, you have a Twitch? Oh, okay. Yeah, you you, uh, you started saying that you play video games. Yeah, um, thick saucy. Okay, yeah, yeah. What is it? What's your Twitch? Give me channel? in chat. Thick saucy, two C's and thick. Thick saucy. Yeah, actually, just uh, kind of gave up on streaming today, and then you called me, and now I'm fired up. Thick saucy. Okay, I'll try to raid you at some point. Oh my man! And uh, next time you're in Detroit, or if if I'm in Colorado by then, I'll come see you. Okay, sick. You'll come see me, and then we. Thanks. I want to hear. I want to hear if you if you actually. I don't. I'm, if you actually start this glass business, I want to know. I want to know. I'll be. I'll, make oh, I'll, I'll send you an Insta. I'll send you a message on Instagram with my storefront. Okay. Don't do it for me though, because I you don't like having people tell you what to do. So I you know. Anyway, all right, all right. We're gonna go in circles. Like hey, this. Mike, can I can I just say? Everyone say says you sound different on the phone, and I don't think you sound any different on the phone at all. You don't know what I sound like when I'm not on the phone, because we've only talked over the phone. Touche. I'll talk to you soon, Mike. Goodbye, Lyle. Goodbye. You know what? I love. You know what? I liked that guy so much. I liked that guy so much that I'm gonna take a hammer and smash my car windshield. Just so I can support his small business. What a guy. Oh my gosh, hello. Hi. Oh my goodness, Lyle. Hi. Hi, what's you? up? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, What is your name? My name, we're going to go with Jane. Uh, What's up, Jane? I like, that's a good, um, that's a classic name. That's yeah, a classic Jane Doe. Name. Yeah. Um, what's going on, Jane? How are you? 
Um, I'm doing good. I'm just drinking Cayman Jack's bacon bread. What's came? What is Cayman Jack's? Um, they're like it's a margarita, but they don't use tequila, so I call it like a fake margarita. Ah, okay. Monday night margarita. I like that. that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. I had a random day off, so I decided why not. Well, uh, a random day off of what? Um, at, of work. Uh, I'm getting my car fixed, so I didn't have a way to get to work today. <laughs> what What do you do? Um, I work at a large corporation that has a lot of warehouses. Okay. What What's I I guess I could keep going. What What's What's in these warehouses? What are they housing? Um, just a lot of products and goods, groceries. Oh, do you work? Then. You work for Amazon. I cannot answer that. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not trying to get you fired. Can you get no, fired for talking about Amazon on a podcast? I've, I feel um, like I've talked to like a ton of people who work for Amazon on here. Well, it's a very large company, so I'm sure that there are quite a few people that do work at Amazon. <laughs> well, um, anyway. Um, okay, so you're on your day off. It's Margarita Monday. Um, yeah. what? Baking some bread. What's your name again? Jane. Jane. Jane, uh, it's okay if not. We can just kind of shoot the ship. But is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about today? So I have two possible things that I would like to talk about. It depends sure. on like what kind of mood you're in. Um, right. The first one has to do with just like my crazy mother and the fact that I didn't realize she was a little unhinged until I was an adult or I am thinking about getting plastic surgery but I'm trying to figure out a way to fund it what uh, what kind of plastic surgery are you thinking about getting okay so it's not anything um that's like per usual I guess like LA standards but I feel like I'm a pretty attractive woman however I was not really blessed with like like perfect attributes i guess you can say and i don't want to get you in trouble with like twitch so i'm trying to figure out a way to say oh you can say you can say you don't i i think with i think with this has been my experience i've been streaming on here for almost three years and i think with my experience like you can say anything but you you can't show sexual things so i mean say whatever you want and are you and you're comfortable with you know, whatever with words. Say, I guess say, I am. Okay, I am. Cool. I am indeed comfortable with words. Cool. So I, <laughs> I have been commonly mistaken for as a man because I have a lot of fat in a certain area. If you kind of catch my drift. Say um, say that one more time. I have been mistaken for a man because I have a lot of fat in a certain area. Wait, I'm tr- I'm trying to think of. Oh, oh, okay, uh-huh, sure. Uh huh. Uh huh. So when I wear clothes, um, anything, um, people often mistake me for being a, a man, and no one ever really like comes out and like flat out asks me, "Oh, well, are you a dude?" The only time that that's ever happened is when I go on dates. A lot of people think that I'm like a trans female to or male to female type of thing, and I'm not. <laughs> Um, so it's all you've like gone on dates with people who think that you're a man. Oh yeah, yeah, and I've even been in a serious relationship where the guy thought I was trans, and he was like surprised when we first like had sex that I was not a man. <laughs> So you're trying to get, uh, like, plastic surgery to correct this? Yes, because, like, I don't know, like, I've grown up with it, so, like, it started, like, in puberty where, like, it started to, like, grow, I guess you can say. It's just fat, and I wanted to get, like, liposuction and, like, skin removal for it, but it costs where I'm at, like, over $10,000, and I only need really? Yeah, I only make forty thousand a year, if, and that's even working overtime. So I don't know how to fund it. So this is this is uh, to get like 
fat removed from your 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 pubic region. Yes, it's called a monsplasty. A monsplasty. And how mm-hmm. long have you been? How long have you been looking into doing this? Um, since I was fourteen years old. Really? But it wasn't really a thing back then where I live because I don't live anywhere where plastic surgery is kind of big. Um, and so it really became a thing around like twenty, like twenty eighteen, where I'm at. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I ask how old you are now? I'm twenty four years old. Okay. Do you have you um have you like talked to have you gotten like consultations with folks and stuff? Yes. So I I have paid for a consultation recently. Um and I like did everything I needed to do. I was waiting for insurance to come back and it's not approved, which I figured it wouldn't be. Um but I'm still I'm like working my ass off every day to save up for this. I started saving up for it like a month ago and I already have a thousand dollars saved up because I've literally just been working 60 hour work weeks like as much as I possibly can and like door dashing but I wanted your opinion on if I should start an OnlyFans to sort of help fund this you wanted my opinion on if you should start an OnlyFans well yeah because I well I mean I don't okay here's the deal I don't talk to anybody I don't have like friends or any like confidants that i can go to you're just a gecko on the internet who okay. does not know who i am so okay. i feel like it's safe i well i have i have several thoughts on all of these things that you're saying for uh, the first one is so you, you say you don't have any you don't have any friends i do not have any friends no do you know have you all have you always not had any friends yeah and that sort of stems from like my childhood Okay. So, yeah. Do you do you um Let me let's go back to this. So, okay. um Okay, so you want to get this surgery because people keep mistaking you for a man. See, I, I so, guess okay. like That's my, not the, obviously the only reason. I just Yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, so that's what I wanted to ask is what are the what are the reasons for why you want the like does it come from cuz I assume a lot of like plastic surgery stuff just comes from like uh I, I don't know, like self esteem yes. things and whatnot. What's what's what else is kind of is fueling this this uh desire? So I cannot go to like a mall or a store to find like specifically pants. Um I for example will go to like a mall and spend the entire time that the mall is open just to try to find pants that like fit me in a way that like does it look terrifying and like meme worthy to everybody else um and i also like excuse me it is definitely like a self-esteem thing i like will go and i'm not like not confident but like it does kind of like beat you down eventually when you like mm-hmm. are walking in public and like you see people visibly staring at that area or like mm-hmm. you try and have conversations with um like i try to have conversations with people at work which is kind of hard because i have social anxiety but they often stare down there and like that triggers mm-hmm. my anxiety even more so mm-hmm. it's not like i'm not confident but it is it is a noticeable thing, and it's definitely, like, something that everybody in a room is aware of, I feel like. Huh. Okay. All right, so with this OnlyFans thing, you how long have you been considering doing that? Um, maybe for the last six months now. I just am afraid of people that I know to find out that I'm doing it. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, I, look, I can't tell you whether or not you should start in OnlyFans. This is a, this is a personal decision. Um. But, huh? Yeah, I don't know. This is this is a tough one here. This is a tough one here. Um. Because I I get I understand why you uh you know don't like uh uh being stared at or that you feel like you're you're the center of attention that you didn't want that you don't know how to mitigate exactly um, yeah 
How long has this been an insecurity for you? Is it, as you said, since you were 14? Um, yeah, so it started when I was like around 12, but like it really became prominent when I was 14. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. What well, I guess, and and you know, for forgive me if I am out of line, but like, what's coming to mind now in my head is like, you know, look, if you're telling me, let's start about how do how do you just feel as a person going through life? Do you feel good? Do you feel like? Uh, oh no! Oh no! No no! Um, if I be completely honest, well, okay, I feel like I have a good head on my shoulders, but okay. I've definitely been through, like, a lot of things that, like, I'm still working on, and, like, it okay. kind of is causing, like, a lot of, like, confusion on where I want to go, like, as an adult, because I do okay. still feel very much like a child, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, it, uh, I guess in my head, I'm like, you know, look, I understand why you're, um might want to get this surgery to correct this thing that you're self-conscious about. But I'm like, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't, you know, no, I do whatever it is that you want to do to go and uh, get this, this surgery, whatever you feel like is the right move for you. But I'm also kind of thinking like, you know, are there thing are there things that you could uh, go and work on and, and do that are not this big expensive surgery <laughs> that, uh, you know, could help you feel less self-conscious or just kind of feel better in general. Uh, do you think there are, are those? Because, I mean, if you're telling me that you don't have any friends um, <laughs> or that you have, like, social anxiety, um, and those are d very difficult. Eh, I'm not going to say they're very difficult problems. to. F I mean, they're difficult. They're, they are, in my opinion, fixable problems yes yeah um so have you like put more have you put thought into fixing those problems before like kind of tunnel visioning in on this surgery well while i i feel like or geck i don't know which one you prefer but call me whatever you I, want okay i you know i throughout my whole life sort of knew that like I had a lot of stuff I needed to work on okay. and I would say that like it's I started working on like obviously the issues that caused me to have social anxiety and anxiety and depression in general as well as like um like the whole not having friends thing like I I have been really focused on that and like I'm in therapy and I have assessed like the relationships that I have in my life and like which relationships I need to let go in order to like improve myself and I do okay. feel like I am in like the best spot I have been mentally and physically even Good. Um, and this is just like one step towards to being like the person that like I see on the inside you know one step closer to being the person that I see on the inside. You you look at you look at getting the surgery as as that. Yeah, because I it probably like is attributed by like I'm sure body dysmorphia, but I definitely feel like I look different. Like like when I'm not looking in the mirror, I feel like. I am just like this completely different human being. And then when I look at the mirror, I'm like, oh yeah. And it's like, just like a red bullseye to that, like one mm. thing, you know? So, mm. and I know that it wouldn't cure like all of my problems getting this thing done. Sure. Yeah. And like, I've even had a discussion with that, like with the doctor and with my therapist, cause they were both were really concerned. Like, why are you even doing this? And it's right. Honestly, there's all the same questions I'm thinking. Yeah, and I, I, you know, the honest answer is, you know, like, I know this is, a, ugh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. I didn't think I was going to get through today. Um, my honest answer to them was, I know that this isn't going to be like a one, like a one fix to all okay. of my problems. Like, I know that there's going to be steps and in reality, like, I do understand that I'm probably going to be in therapy and working on myself 
well, obviously working on myself for all of my life, but specifically the whole therapy part, like I am probably going to be in for the rest of my life. And like, I'm okay with that. What is your, uh, what is your therapist's take on this whole thing? Um, she told me straight up that like, I haven't done anything for myself my whole entire life. And that if this is something that I want and I can find a reasonable way to do it and pay for it in a way that like, I feel like is smart because I'm not a big believer on like putting myself in a lot of debt. I'm actually just almost done finishing off like all my payments towards my debt. Yeah. She's. She told me, you know, like, if you can find a way to reasonably do this, then I think you should do it because you haven't really been able to do anything for yourself your whole life. So. Oh, huh, okay. Hmm. Well, you know, listen, I mean, I mean, look, I'm going to level with you here. I think that you're, you know, definitely dealing with uh, uh, things that are, um, you know, real therapist territory. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um. I guess you well, know that, well, I don't really uh, need your opinion on the whole OnlyFans thing. I guess okay. you would be a good person to ask for like how to like promote yourself. Not obviously. You you, sex you want you want, but, you want you want mark you want marketing but, advice for for your only. I could give you mark if you look. I can't. Here's the thing: is I cannot. I'm I I cannot tell you whether or not you should start an OnlyFans. It's a personal decision. But if you have made the decision yourself to start one and you would like marketing advice. I, I you know, I could give yeah. you marketing advice perhaps, but, but so, so, so listen, so, um, huh. Huh. Well, I, you know, look, your therapist obviously, uh, knows you more than I do. And if they think that it's a good decision for you to do it for yourself, then, you know, I, I would, uh, I would heed whatever they tell you. Um, Huh. Huh. But I, I guess, you know, we had the same questions, right? Mm-hmm. Which was like, what is and the purpose? Which questions. was like, what is the purpose behind this? Because I, I would hope, I hope that you are not, and it doesn't sound like you are, you know, looking at this surgery as some kind of like cure all to all of your life's problems, or even that, or even that it would make a dent in them. You know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, when it comes to, like, uh, fucking self-esteem and putting, learning how to put yourself out there and learning how to go make friends, you know, um, I mean, those are all things that are, are tough to learn, but you can do them for free. And they're not mutually exclusive. Mm-hmm. You know, look, go out and do your OnlyFans and, and make, your, make your money. And, you know, in the meantime... You know, I, I hope that you're not sitting there going like, okay, once the surgery is it, you know, then that's it. Then my life is, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a before surgery, after surgery kind of a life is going to happen. You know, uh, in the meantime, if you can make some time to, you know, uh, learn how to put yourself out there and, and try to make friends, whether that's at your job or at some kind of extracurricular activity type of thing, um, and that those things aren't mutually exclusive, I think you can make it work. I'm glad yeah. that your your um, you know therapist has been helpful about this, though. Yeah, my therapist is great. I I started seeing her recently, so it's going good. Um, Reddit's a good place to promote your OnlyFans, I think. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad I could do something. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, it was either that or, like, my whole thing with my mom. So I'm kind of glad that you chose that because that was probably smarter. So, Do you have any um, kind of, like, other final thoughts on this that you wanted to share before we go? Yeah, it's okay to struggle. And it's not about perfection, but progression. I like that. I like that. Jane. All right, I got it right. Mm-hmm. I got your. F- I remembered your fake name. I'm, that's a. Win for me. <laughs> um, that is a win. Thank you for calling, Jane. I appreciate it. You have a good one. You too, Gek. Thank you. You know, sometimes I feel as though my gecko head is a bit too bulbous. I don't know how much uh, money that surgery would cost to get it thinned out, but I've learned to love it. I've learned to love it. Call from. AJ. 
Hello? Is this Lyle? Yeah, who is this? This is AJ. Hi, AJ. What's up? Uh, not much. Just being a gecko on the internet. What's up with you? Um, I'm watching a gecko on the internet. Um, I actually, uh, I tried calling a little more than a year ago mm -hmm. and got a hold of one of the screeners and it was like towards the end of an episode and I was going through an episode and I'm a lot better now. So, okay. It's cool to connect with the gecko. Um, yeah, man. Is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about today? Well, I suppose I could talk about what I was going to talk about. Um, I got fired from Starbucks for eating a brownie that I didn't pay for. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you got fired from Starbucks for eating a brownie that you didn't pay for. Tell me more. Well, it was a, a university, like a campus Starbucks, and a part of the culture for everyone working there was to, like, eat the food, make drinks for yourself. It wasn't like a, it was just weird. Like, the fact that I got fired, like, terminated on the spot, like, it, it was just a little bizarre, a lot to handle. Um, uh, was it like a special brownie where it was like, did it have nuts in it? No, man. It was like okay. a pre-processed, pre-packaged, two-pack brownie in a plastic sleeve. And Damn. I, uh, have, Cause, have you worked in food before? You know what I mean? Like, cause I would understand if it was, a, if it had nuts in it because nuts are, they're pretty least. expensive. So I would it probably, <laughs> you know would make sense to fire you for eating a brownie with nuts in it. But just a regular brownie, I feel like that's that's uh, illegitimate. Yeah, uh, but on corporate standard, like on paper, it's like that's theft, and theft is yeah. grounds for termination. To, an to answer your question, I used to work at a frozen yogurt store, and you better believe that I thieved lots of Ooh. cookies and cream yogurt directly from the fucking dispenser into my mouth. Oh, um, what about, like, the fridge in the back with the toppings? Do you get those, like... Oh, yeah. Of, well, like I worked at a... I worked at a frozen yogurt... I worked at the best... I worked at the best kind of job, which is a job at a failing business. It's the best yeah. kind of job. Yeah, because I... It's all on the way out. It's all on the way out. So I would, um... I mean, I worked at this frozen yogurt store. All the candy there was stale... Um, and nobody would come in. It would like maybe one person would maybe come in, uh, every shift. And so I was just like, kind of, I was more guarding it than I was like watching it. Um, and dude, I was in there fucking eating cookie dough bites and making milk shit. I mean, it was not good, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, okay, you know, because at one point in my life, I also worked at a frozen yogurt place. Can you tell me? What is your – because, like, building a yogurt cup, there's a process to it. What is your bottom layer? Uh, let's see. I usually mixed cookies and cream with red velvet cake. Uh, I put a white chocolate drizzle on it, uh, some Butterfinger – Oh my and God. Uh, yeah, that's, that was that was it. I mean, that was so. Oh, damn, even thinking about that right now is making me, it's making Kinda me hungry. horny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Dude, all right. Fine. So so all right. What's so you got fired from Starbucks for eating a brownie? You know, good. Yeah. Justified. What? Uh, what are you gonna? What are you gonna do now? Uh, now I. I'm an elementary school teacher, and I teach yoga. Okay. Well, don't eat one of the kids. I I won't. I, you know, I won't. That'll get you. That'll get you fired as well. Yeah. Uh, what? So you teach yoga? Yeah. Uh, how is that? It's it's pretty cool, man. Um, I 
was practicing for a while at a studio and by going more and more my healing process started to go a certain way and I thought maybe if this is working for me I can share this with other people and I've been teaching for a little more than a year now and I'm kind of hitting a stride and have a consistent following at the studio that I teach at and it's, it's pretty good man like I, I just enjoy it a lot do you have a man bun I am bald <laughs> I like I feel like that's even better for a yoga teacher look um what do you go ahead go ahead no you what do you teach at the school uh so i'm the permanent substitute teacher it's different every day but i'm also in the process of going through a teacher license online so to eventually be i would like to be an elementary school teacher you know, like, I was thinking we had some wild substitute teachers uh, back in the day that had they really had no idea what they were doing. And like I'm looking back on it as an adult, and I'm like, where did they fucking find these people? Yeah, it's uh, especially now with the state of education across the board. Um, if you have a pulse, you can have a substitute teacher's license. Um. And there are there are some weird ones. Uh, I, I remember having a substitute teacher back when I was in middle school that was pulling from a bottle, like behind a desk. We didn't we didn't know it at the time, but you know, like you get older and you think that probably wasn't Coca Cola. Um, oh, she was she was getting drunk in class. Yeah. Well, there are movies that make that look cool, so I kind of understand. <laughs> But uh, I think where I'm at, like most of our subs are pretty tame. Mm -hmm. I think if you're, I think if if you can somehow prove that you're better at teaching world history when you're drunk, you should be allowed to do it. Oh, I mean, that. Uh, what is what was that series? Drunk history was that on like Comedy Central? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, there was, there was. Uh, yeah, like that. I mean, there was that. There was that. So that Those could be historians something. Were so passionate, but it was like yeah. if they a little bit more, it unlocked these hidden memories, and they were able to make connections they didn't know that they could make before. Um. All right. So yeah, I mean that's alcohol. It's like you know how people um. You know how people say that, like, taking shrooms, like, will unlock your mind and make you smarter and stuff? How come no one no, no one ever says that about getting wasted? Because you can't remember it. Maybe it's because you're, maybe it's because you were too powerful. I, I don't know, man. I think there's some, like, blacking out. I think there's some truth to that. Like, you don't remember. Um, um, if you're on a trip... Okay. That sticks with you. Like you, it's the only thing you think about for a few days after. Um. So, are you happy? Yeah, man. Okay. I, I, are you are you happier than you were when? Um, are you happier than than you were when you uh, were a fucking um, working at Starbucks? Absolutely. Um, immediately after that job, I started working in landscaping for the summer. And those were, you know, 10 hour, 12 hour days. And Starbucks was only ever an eight hour day. I was more stressed out and miserable in those eight hours of Starbucks than I ever was working outside. Huh. Huh. Uh, do the kid? Oh, okay. All right. Important question: Who is more obnoxious, Starbucks patrons or children? Starbucks patrons. Ooh, without a question. I mean, that's what's the? Uh, but it's also through the, in the context of 
a Starbucks that is on a campus. Like that is a very specific population. Oh, you were at an you were at an on campus star, so everyone was a college kid. Yeah. Oh, tell me about these fuckers. What what kind of things were they doing? I mean, like white mocha with ten pumps of white mocha, extra foam, or green tea lemonade, ten pumps liquid cane, no ice. You know, just like the the most high maintenance stuff and. It's for them. I I think it was. It's more like a control thing. Um, mm-hmm. I want this person to make my treat exactly the way I want it. Yeah. Uh, right. They well, well. When you're in college, you're just saddled up with debt, and uh, you're upset. All, and, yeah, and everyone's telling you what to do. I feel like I feel like uh, the one bastion of control they have is like making the Starbucks guy do their white mocha exactly the way they wanted. That's what they were grasping yes. for. Yes. And it yeah. wasn't, you know, they were using their meal swipes for Starbucks. You know, it was not even real money for them. Um, and they were just so demanding. Uh, Can I, I want to say this too. I hate, I'll, I'll say, I will say this on record. I don't care if they reach out and they're like, promote Starbucks for, Actually, no. If they reach out and they want me to, they want to give me a lot of money, then I'll take this off the record. But um, I hate Starbucks. I hate it. I really do. On for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. Um, I don't like their coffee, and the, everything they do is so expensive. Like those fucking cake pops, the little one bite of cake. It's like four dollars. For, no reason. for, for no, reason. no reason. And you know what's worse is people pay it, and they love fucking Starbucks. And they, they love. Make- Star- they prop their phone up and get the sunshine right behind them and get their selfie and tag it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, far superior, superior. brand. Far All superior. Day. Yeah, All they day. have a better connection. But the the thing about Dunkin' is that it's less, it's less like high class advertise. Like, like Starbucks is kind of advertised as like a legitimate fancy coffee shop and Dunkin' is a little bit more fast foody, but it's, it's superior. I'll tell you though, man. Starbucks food is fast food. Everything is in a plastic bag, and you throw it in a microwave, and you give it to them. You, you, it, you know, they're paying eight dollars for a hot pocket. I don't. Uh, yeah. Well, well, was it worth it? Stealing fast food to get fired. It sounds like it was. I, I, I think. So. <laughs> I mean, the manager taught me, like, mid-bite. I, I mean, I took it off of the tray, walked into the back. It was like, you know, a line past the door. I was super stressed out, just, like, ripped the bag open, took a bite out of the brownie. The manager opened the door and saw me, and then turned around and walked away. And then a week later, I was terminated. What's Just, your name again? Will? Huh? What's your is your name Will? AJ. Oh. Um What's next what's next for you? You were uh you worked at Starbucks, then you were a yoga elementary school guy. What's your deal? What what's how's your life end? Uh it's it seems like everything is always in transition, but um I'm working at the school. And landscaping season is starting up again in a couple weeks. So I'm preparing for that, you know. And uh, just living, you know. Plugging away at the teaching license. So this summer, hopefully, is the last summer I landscaping. And then I can get Mm -hmm. a teaching position for the next school year and just be a school teacher. Well, I hope that doesn't suck as much as it sounds like it does. It's, um, I can also say though, like as far as landscaping companies go, the particular one that I'm at is, I don't have some foreman breathing breathing down my neck, you know, Mm -hmm. most people are pretty cool. It's just long hours. Um, but it's, 
it's good work. You, mean, you don't know, man. Like, you're outside. You got your hands in the dirt. At the end of the day, you can see that you've done something. Well, listen, Will, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, be well and know that you can choose to be well. Um, I'd like to ask you one thing, though. It's true. You can choose to be well unless if you have terminal cancer. What were you going to ask me? Oh, oh, yeah, that is true. Uh, what is the best console Zelda game? Oh, I don't know. Um, What's the I haven't favorite? Played, I, I haven't played. I haven't. My, I haven't. I haven't played them all to say. So um, I can't well, answer that your... question just yet. But ask me. Ask me again um, when I. A- ask me again at the end of this year. I'm probably going to start playing them again. But uh, I mean, I like Breath of the Wild, but I, I, I haven't. Give me some. I, I can't answer that question. I haven't fully played them all yet. Okay. I mean, what's yours? It was always Ocarina of Time, but in more recent years, I'm like more a Twilight Princess guy. I don't know. Okay, I want to play Twilight Princess on the Twitch on the Switch, but it's it's on. I don't think it's on there yet. I'm gonna play uh, Skyward Sword soon, so we'll see how that is. It is. Have you played that? Yeah, I'm actually playing that one now. And is it good? It... Yes and no. I think it has the best storyline, but as far as because it's like we game we mechanics late game skyward sword is kind of bad but the storyline is amazing okay you, all right i'll 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 play i'll i'm going to play it despite your scathing review it's not i mean the storyline even just like the cutscenes in it you know link and zelda talking to each other it made me cry and that's you know it's wow. great well, you know, that's I think that's really pathetic. No, I'm that's just okay. That sounds I'm kidding. Can... I'm, I'm I'm probably going to cry too. I'm probably going to cry too. Right on, man. This uh this made my night. I appreciate Mine too. your time. Um keep gecking. Hey, you too. Take care, Will. All right. 